Philip, a very good morning to you. Good morning, Mike. So, um, it's all getting a little bit testy, um, not just in this country, but over in the Middle East as well, isn't it? Why has it become suddenly now um, an issue of telling people in Lebanon to, to, to get out of the way? Well, I think test is probably a bit of an understatement. Yes, I think of you're course, right. We, we, we've got the, the anticipated uh, Iranian response to the accusations that Israel killed the Hamas leader in Tehran. Yes. And we've got the Israelis having admitted attacking Hezbollah commanders and killed them inside Beirut in Lebanon. Um, and therefore, there's a, a, an expectation that the Middle East is going to blow up and therefore recommendations from the you know, United States, UK, France has now come in to tell their nationals to leave Lebanon. Uh, and of course, people decide not to do that. And whenever things start to get really bad, they then expect their governments to come and uh, try and extricate them. And that's why uh, naval ships have been put on standby in the eastern Mediterranean, just in case a non-combatant evacuation operation is needed. Right. And so, I mean, my understanding of our naval ship um, sort of size is that there's not very many of them. I mean, I think last time I checked, I think we had one warship somewhere down in the China Sea, South China Sea, and one somewhere in the Gulf of uh, um, Oman, but that's about it. Well, the, the Navy's running hot. We've got, we've got a couple more in um, uh, the, the, the Gulf region at the moment and in the Mediterranean that can, that can influence to what's going on. And we've got ships in the Caribbean and elsewhere. You know, the Royal Navy is one of the few navies in the world that is truly global, mm. but we don't have enough ships to you know, manage that global presence, and therefore that's uh, what the Defence Review will hopefully identify and either cut the commitments, which would be a bad thing, or increase the number of ships. Yes. Um, but um, naval ships uh, from different nations are um, increasing their presence around the Gulf region, anticipating this Iranian attack on Israel. That is going to be a big problem, isn't it? But the last time the, the Iranians attacked Israel, of course, they were saved by their incredible, um, you know, sort of iron dome system, weren't they? Well, it wasn't just it wasn't just the Iron Dome system. We had an international coalition come together to start to shoot down the Iranian missiles before they got into the um, region of the Iron Dome. So the UK used Typhoon aircraft flying out of Cyprus. The United States um, had um, aircraft flying from their carrier groups in the region um, and had. Um, uh, anti-aircraft missiles, anti-missile missiles fired from their ships. The, the, the Saudis got involved, the Jordanians got involved, uh, and all of these different nations are uh, getting onto, uh, into standby positions again to try and shoot down as many of the missiles that are fired before they get into Israeli airspace, allowing the Iron Dome system to pick up those ones that do manage to get through. No, quite. And then a slightly disturbing story in the Sun this morning. I don't know if you've seen this, Philip, about our submarine fleet. Apparently all six of Britain's hunter-killer subs are stuck in port because the Royal Navy's got no working docks to repair them. Yeah, and, and that's a shocking story if it's if it's completely accurate and I've no reason to doubt it whatsoever. No. And if you read the, if you read the detail, it's because the manufacturer of the ropes that are needed inside the special dry docks um, has gone bust and they can't replace the ropes from anywhere else. This shows the shocking state of our defences and the support level in, in our defences. And for too many years, there's been the veneer of having a brand new big green or big grey shiny thing mm. that senior officers and politicians can stand aside and get their photographs taken, where people have forgotten about the logistic stocks of numbers of um, shells and rockets that are needed for ropes that are needed on specialist um, docks to repair submarines because mm. they're not sexy. You know, politicians and admirals and generals don't like standing beside a pile of rope or a pile of shells sitting in a shed because that doesn't you know, give them the same sort of feeling as a brand new aircraft or a brand new aircraft carrier. Mm. And this is where that sort of mentality has to stop. Exactly right, because it's not shiny, therefore they can't, as you say, uh, look as if they've got something, a new toy to play with. Exactly. They, they, they like the big boys' toys, um, uh, and they're supposed to be PC, I have to say, big girls' toys as well. But um, <laughs> they, 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 they don't like the stuff that makes it all work. And for too many years, they've been bluffing themselves as the real capability of what we've got. Uh, Ukraine has highlighted that um, e enormously, and you know, the, the, the bill to try and fix it is going to be eye-watering. Yeah. We don't need 2.5% of GDP being spent on defence. We probably need 3 4 or 5% for a period of time. Yeah, quite. And just one final question for you, Philip. A lot of people are talking at the moment of uh, possibly bringing the army in to deal with these rioters. I mean, would they have the capability, one, to do that, and two, would they want to? Well, 
Yes, the army has, but it, it takes a bit of training. But the police have got more than enough resources to deal with what's going on at the moment. Mm. It's just people trying to stir the pot and, and create new headlines that are saying, bring the army in. Um, you know, the, 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 the police have that ability. They've got people who are better trained in um, civil disturbance um, than the military are. It's been a long time since the military have had to get properly involved. But of course, if things break down further, they're always there. Absolutely. Philip, good to talk to you. Thank you very much indeed. Philip Ingham, the former senior military intelligence officer.